Hi, it's Phoebe from Quilted Pig. Welcome to my studio. I'm glad you're here today. Today I am getting ready to cut out hexagons for a new quilt. And so I thought I'd share with you different ways that you can cut a hexagon because they can be a little intimidating sometimes, even for a seasoned quilter. Now I'm going to show you three ways today. One is with no tools at all except for your regular rotary cutter and a ruler. The, uh, the next is with a set of templates that are made for rotary cutting. And then finally, we'll use a um, machine that rotates the fabric through and cuts it with a blade for accuracy. Now, here's the very first thing that you need to know about cutting hexagons. Starch, 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 starch. All of it, all the starch. Um, you can buy this at your quilting shops. You can buy this at the grocery store. Both of them work. You need one of them. And the reason for that is because you're going to have four out of your six edges are going to be on basically a bias. So you want to be sure that those are stabilized, that they're not going to stretch on you as you're handling them either through the cutting or the sewing process. So um, like I said, we're going to start out with just using a ruler. Now the reason you might want to just use a ruler is um, maybe you're only doing one project. You don't think hexagons are going to be your long-term thing. Um, maybe you're just using them to add an accent, maybe an applique or something like that. And so you don't want to do just tons and tons of them. There's no reason to invest money in a, a fancy uh, ruler system or in one of those cutters that does the cutting for you. So you can use just your ruler. Now I have marked this with some painter's tape and I thought that would help you see better, but it occurs to me right now that I'm using blue painter's tape while wearing a blue shirt. So hopefully we'll be able to do this. Um, what I've done is most rulers come with a 60 degree line marked on them and I marked the line specifically so that you could see it. So let's get you zoomed in and we will start taking a look at what I'm actually doing in order to cut these hexagons. Okay, so here we are with just our regular ruler. As I said before, I've marked the 60 degree line with a piece of tape to kind of help you to be able to visually see what I'm seeing. And we're gonna start out with a strip of fabric. Now, when you're measuring um, to do hexagons, the things that you will consider is, are you going to measure based on how high it is, how tall it is, or based on the length of the side? Now, the length of the side is convenient and you'll see that in a minute how that works, but if you're measuring it by how tall it is, when you get to start piecing these together as well as when you're putting together um, what you need, how much fabric you need in order to make the number of hexagons that you want, having it by the height of the hexagon itself is actually an easier measurement to work with. So that's what I've done. I have started out with a three and a half inch strip. This is three and a half inches wide. Now normally I would cut this the full width of the fabric, but in the interest of saving us some time as well as making it a little more manageable so that you can see what I'm doing, I've just got a little scrap piece here. Now, as I said, I have starched this. You can see it's pretty starchy. And we will get started with our first cut. So again, I'm left-handed, but we're actually gonna end up turning this quite a few times as we go through and so things will change and uh, you'll see how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start out with my 60 degree line. I've got it lined up against what to me is the top of the fabric. So that piece of tape is lined up there and I've, I'm just straight against that. So I'm gonna trim off this little corner. So you can see that now, a way to test that is I have my little cheater tester right here, and I can line this up with my piece and see that that is still correct. So that is going to be a tool for us to use throughout the whole process of doing this. So the next thing we'll do, I'm going to spin my ruler around this way because this is my new cut line. And something that we need to do, because you think, oh, well, where do I cut that? Here's what we'll do. This, like I said, remember, was three and a half. So three, excuse me, half of three and a half is one and three quarters. 
So I'm going to use an ink pen and I'm just going to mark that. So I'm laying it up straight here. I'm going to measure up so I have one and a half and then right here will be three quarters. So that's going to be my mark. Conveniently, um, additionally, if you start out with a three and a half inch strip, which I didn't realize this when I first set it up, but if you start out with a three and a half inch strip, conveniently the edges of the sides are two inches. So just something to keep in mind in case you're thinking, how can I make this work best for me? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the ruler so that the tape line, which is the um, that 60 degree angle, if you recall, lines up to the edge of the fabric. And then I'm gonna scoot, scoot, scoot the ruler just until that little pin mark that I made, and you can use a pencil if you like. Um, obviously I'm using a pin in hopes that you'll be able to see it a little better. So that line is halfway between top and bottom, so we know that that's where our point should be to make it an equal hexagon. And once again, we'll get our blade out and cut that. Set that to the side. Now you can see you end up with a lot of little weird pieces once you're done with that. And um, you can save them. Uh, people use them to stuff dog beds, whatever. The, you'll have a lot of small scraps from cutting hexagons. So at this point, I'm starting to see that I'm getting a hexagon flushed out of this a little bit. You can see that it um, makes that point, it's even. The next step is, like I said, remember that this is two inches. So what I can do with that, I'm sorry I keep flipping my ruler around. This is one of those rulers that has the uh, um, half inch added to it. And so you can uh, use that to determine, like to cut when you're doing uh, seam allowances and things like that to add those two pieces. So what I've done here now is I've measured two inches from those two corners that we just created. Two inches out from there, I'm gonna use my pin. Now this part is time consuming. On the first one on a strip, it is going to be time consuming. But as you will see in just a second, we're gonna make our next cut of this hexagon will become the first cut of the next hexagon. So see how that works. And to do that, we take, let's see here. We need this line here. So again, our 60 degree line. And we want to line that up with the edge of the fabric. And then we're going to, again, scoot that over just to where our pin mark is. Making sure that we're lined up with the fabric and just to where our pin mark is. Now, as I'm cutting this, you'll see that the next hexagon will be right here. So as we make this cut and then we spin it around and we make the next cut, that'll be those first two cuts of the next hexagon. So that does, it goes a little quicker as you march down the row. Um, another measurement to test if you're you know looking to see, okay, am I squared up, am I not? Since we're using our pin mark here and we know that from an edge to an edge, this should be three and a half inches, I can look here from my edge of my ruler all the way down to the edge of this first cut is three and a half inches. So we are good. Set this one back to the side, expose the blade again, and we'll make that next cut. So you can see now this one to me, these always look like jewels when they're at this point. And the next item that I'm going to show you, you'll see that uh, there's actually some pieces that you can cut like this and it makes, you know, for more interesting hexagon play if you decide that that's something that you want to pursue. So here we are again. I'm just spinning the piece and I can see my little mark right there from where I'm, when it was here and I sliced here, I had also marked a two inch mark here for this side. Spin that around. At this point, it's a small enough piece you can just spin the piece around instead of messing around with other things. So once again, we take our 60 degree line and we put it on the line that we just cut. So we will line that up and then we're gonna scoot it back far enough 
just to our pin mark. Make sure our line's straight. We're at the pin mark. We are at three and a half inches this way, so we know we're good. And again, this is a slow going thing. Hexagons aren't like cutting out squares and things. Um, they take a little more time, but the result can be very rewarding. So you can see now I've got a little hexagon. Now, I don't think I could have fussy cut that better if I had tried, but you can see that that's how that works. Now, once again, there's that next piece that's already there. We um, know that it's going up halfway, so I can take a pin mark, and I can go for one and three quarters once again, so two right there. Once again, I line up my tape mark with what I just cut. Look over there, line that up, right at my pin mark, expose the blade, off we go. At this point, we're going to measure from here to here. So point to point there, and that will give us our next one. This is how you can do this. You don't have to have a fancy ruler or a template kit or anything like this. You can knock it out yourself with just the 60 degree line that's on your ruler. So again, taking my tape, lining it up with, I realized that we didn't just cut this line, but this would be the next one going around the circle or around the hexagon. Line that line up, get there where we can see it. Sorry, I'm trying to be close enough to myself that I can work without stabbing myself with the ruler and also keeping you guys in the middle of the frame. So I'm lining it up on my pin mark, looking at it, there we go. Get that blade exposed. Pull that off. You can see now again, we're at the gemstone looking part and the last bit to cut off is that triangle. So once again, we line up our line we locate that little pin mark and we are also again at the point where we can see three and a half inches here. And cut that off. So you can see the first one went a little slow, but the second one goes a lot faster. So our next item is I wanted to show you guys how to do these with a template set. Now I have two sets of these. Um, these are from Marty Michelle and there are other brands. This one just happens to be what I have and I like them a lot. They're pretty handy to use. Um, it has, depending on which set you have, it has different sizes and different shapes and things. So for this particular one, I'm gonna use this size. So let's see, hold it up. Hopefully you can see it against that backdrop. Um, the instructions for this one and you'll see how when I said you're cutting basically the next one as you're going. The instructions for this one say to cut the fabric at three and one eighths to use this template size. Now, um, once again, the instructions also say to cut like this and to line it up this way so that the hexagon is within the lines. And you can see that this is a diamond shape, but the reason for that is because you, you can use it in different scenarios to create different shapes. Now it says to do it like this, which is fine. You're gonna cut and cut and cut and cut. But as we just discussed, by turning it like this, when I make this cut over here, that will actually be the second, or excuse me, the first cut of the next diamond or the next hexagon. And something else that's handy about these shapes, I don't know if you can see it, um, they have little holes drilled in them, which, you know, if you're going to be hand piecing these or things like that, not using setting triangles, you can mark that with a pin. They also show you where the um, seam allowances are so that you can judge that. So let's get our blade out. So where these hexagons were three and a half, this is gonna start out at three and one eighths from here to here. 
and that's just the shape that they are. And in some ways, like if you're not doing a ton of them, the using the ruler is better for this just because you can choose how, how big you want it to be. <clears throat> so we cut that off, hold it in place, cut that off. So you can see now we have a diamond shape. And at this point, you can just line this back up Use the lines on the on the template. And cut those triangles off. Handy and easy. And then, like I said, the next one, your first cut is already made. So when you lay that on there, See how the first cut is already made? So you can use that to help line yourself up. I have a wild time with this rotary cutter. I like it because I feel like it's safe, but at the same time, it can get a little rowdy on you. Now again, something that's nice about doing these with the clear ruler or a template like this is that you can fussy cut. So if we were just cutting a few and we wanted to, you know, accentuate something in the fabric, we can do that. So again, we just line it up, get that blade out. I'm just gonna set it down, <laughs> swap hands there. And we go in here. And once again, we have two hexagons again, and you can see that went pretty quickly. Not a lot of measuring. Um, next, I'm going to show you what I am doing on my next project that I'm actually starting to do the cutting for today. Okay, so this is a Go Cutter. Um, I think there's more than one brand out there. This just happens to be the one that I have. And what I have here is a template that allows you to cut hexagon shapes. The advantage to using this for hexagons is it's going to be accurate every time, all the same. Um, a little bit of a disadvantage is that it's a little hard to place it where you want if you're trying to fussy cut, those kind of things. But for what I'm doing right now, this is going to be the good process. Now, doing this, the AccuQuilt tells you to fan the fabric, which by that they mean fold it like accordion style, like that. Obviously this is too tight of a fold for what we're doing here, but I wanted you to kind of see what I'm after there. So I'm just gonna lay it in here. For this largest hexagon, it instructed me to cut the fabric at four and three quarters of an inch. Um, it also has you cut so that when you put it in the machine, it goes, the crosswise grain is this way. Because if you have it this way, as the machine goes over it, it can press it and cause it to stretch, which is another good reason for why we wanted to make sure that we starched the fabric. Now, this says you can do it by six layers at a time. I am only going to do four, partly because I'm using kind of this scrap fabric and it's not that wide and partly because I'm not super confident with this cutting through six layers because this fabric honestly seems a little thick. So we put it on there. We lay down, this is a little protector mat that protects the machine itself from the blade. The blade is inside embedded in between this foam. So we lay down the little mat and then we laid it on the little mat and then we just crank and it goes this way and you can kind of hear it popping a little bit and squeezing and that is the blade actually coming up and hitting this and we just smoothly roll it through and it will go it felt that when it went through the four layers that's why i didn't want to do the six and so we let it go all the way through When it comes out, we lift off that protective sheet. And what we have is four perfect, all the same hexagons. 
that you can see there. So that was quick and easy. Um, it measures every single one the same. Um, for regular square pieces, I, this isn't my favorite piece of equipment to use. However, for something like this, it can really shorten up your time. Um, so that's why I wanted to show that to you. So now that you've seen the different ways that you can use to cut hexagons, either with the rolling quick cutter, with a template, or just with a standard ruler, if you're, if you're just doing a few, there's no reason to buy expensive equipment. Um, but now that you've seen that, I hope that you'll be confident with hexagons. I do have um, plans for another video. Actually, I'm going to make a video of making the hexagon quilt that you saw me cut with this cutter today. So I hope that you'll leave a comment. If you have questions on anything about cutting the hexagons, please let me know and I will hopefully see you soon. If you like the video, go ahead and hit like and please consider subscribing to my channel, Quilted Pig. Thank you again for joining me. Bye.